Good evening and welcome to the show. This is Katie and Home. You're tuned in to What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi. Thank you so much for making the time to watch tonight because we have a very interesting story, which is, of course, is interesting and inspiring because that's what this show is about. For the first time ever, I get to speak to a mortician, okay? And she's young she's a female she is so hot as you can see <laughs> welcome to the show Anne. thank you so much and wanjiko njoki exactly okay yes. karibu sana Asante. you look amazing thank you so, so mortician huh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so right before the show started she'll say i'm not used to so much noise you know me i just <laughs> silence silence is her thing yet her personality is, i think she's sanguine like your yeah. You know, a sanguine personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's get to why this choice of career? Service. Service? Yes. So of everything that happens in the service industry, yes. you wanted to serve the dead? Yes. Wow. Do we, do we take it back to your childhood? What was that like? Um, hmm. Growing up, mm -hmm. uh, in our setup then, I do not think we were presented uh, so many options as far as career is concerned. Okay. Uh, there was always the doctor, the pilot, the, the, the judges. Uh, but in time, yeah. uh, things happen in life yeah. and they redirect the course of, Your you life. know, yeah, the course of life. Yeah. So I would say out of tragedy, mm. that's where I drew my inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, tragedy struck and um, I became a mortician, yes. So what was the tragedy? I lost my mom. Mm. Uh, and uh, she looked good the last day that I saw her. Mm. And for a minute, I never knew where people were taken once they left. How old were you? I was 16. Oh, one six. So a yes, teenager. I was a teenager, yes, yeah. Yes. And she looked so peaceful. And I didn't know like it was a thing. Like you could really look that good when you were dead. So I was like, okay. To some extent, it took away some bit of grief. Because I was like, she's resting. Okay. Uh, there's nothing as bad as seeing someone in trauma. Their eyes open, their mouth wide open. It, uh -huh. gives, it doesn't give you that much um, ease yeah. when you're grieving. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that was a starting point. Uh, contributed by so many other things moving forward. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so far, six years down the line, we are here. Six years. Yes. So... Um did you come from a single mom home? Yes, uh -huh. I was raised by a single mom. Okay, you're the first one? I was, I'm the first one, still okay. love yes. Oh, you still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many siblings? We are two, okay. me and my brother, uh -huh. uh, whom I'm a mom to, uh -huh. out of default. Right. And I think I'm acing it at oh, being nice. a parent. Nice. Uh, yeah, and um, a day at a time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So what happened that you, uh, what happened to your mom that she passed on, you know, when you were so young? Uh, she was sick. Uh, yeah, she became sick. Uh -huh. uh, but not for long. Okay. I think uh, in two months time, yeah, she had dressed it. So it was just you, your mom and your brother? Yes. So when she passed on, was that in the house? Yes. I, she was the first person that I saw dead. Yes. Ever, ever in your life? Ever. I was a child. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So if it's only just you and your brother and mm -hmm. you found her, yeah. so you didn't know what to do at that point? Uh, we were at uh, the custody of my grandma when she was mm. sick. So, um, well, uh, it's not easy. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not. Mm. And uh, at some point you get to experience an, an out-of-body experience. When you lose someone for the first time, you don't know how to process grief. You feel like see if it's you're acting a movie or something. Mm. And you know, you think it's going to stop. Right. Or you think these people are gone and they're going to come back. Yeah. Until uh, reality sits you down and it's like, this person is never going. It's never coming, coming back. back. Yeah? yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's a journey. Grief is a journey. Uh, healing is a process. Hmm. And uh, grief is the price we pay for love. So it must not be easy um, coming home from wherever you are, you know, you yeah, were, and, yeah. and finding your mom has passed on. Yeah, she actually passed on my watch. I was there. Oh, you were there? Yeah, I was there with her. Yeah, we're giving her palliative care. What's that? Uh, it's the care you give to someone who is critically ill. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we were there. Okay. Yeah, we were there. Okay. Yeah. And the grieving process, so could you explain to me what that is? Um... 
When you lose someone who is close to you, there is the separation bit of it. Mm -hmm. That is what is termed as grief, in my own understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't really mourn because someone is dead. They mourn because you're separated from something you loved so or deep. something you, you, you used to feel about these people. So that process of recovery, the process of pain, of learning to live without, that is what grief is about. Is all about separation. You have been separated from something or someone who meant something or did something for you. Right. Yes, yes, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you're saying that you know that they're not going to come back. They're not going to come back. That's the sad reality. I tell my clients, it's good to grieve because you love them dearly. But the reality is these people are gone. They're never coming back. Mm -hmm. So you mourn with a purpose. You grieve with a purpose. And you don't grieve as if you want to ask them back. They're not coming back. That's it. That's on life. That's how it is. Yes. It's the first time in my life yeah. I'm hearing that phrase, grieve yeah. with a purpose. Yes. So what would the purpose be? The purpose is to heal. Hmm. As much as we do not really heal, you can never heal. From, yeah. from the memories still come. But with time, it becomes fond, the fond memories. The pain, the pain goes, it becomes less. Yes, that yeah. is healing, yeah. but we really never forget. No. No, you don't forget the people you love. So you were in high school that yes. time when you lost your school, mom. Yes. And uh, of course in high school, none of us know what we want to do. I know. Oh, you did? <laughs> I didn't oh, know. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, hey, you're the first one. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> we never know. Yeah. So you finished high school. Yes. And you are still under your grandma's care, yes. you and your brother. Yes. And so after Form 4, what happened to your uh, life? My family is full of teachers. Yes, so for That's some awesome. reasons, I wanted to become a teacher, oh. a lecturer to be precise. Yeah. I loved that. I loved the, the way I could passing knowledge. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know what, before you, know, they, you finish from four and people are like, go do yeah. driving, computer mm. and stuff. <laughs> I did cosmetology. Yes, oh, like so I, did that that. <laughs> that. <laughs> I did hairdressing and beauty as a course. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. But I really didn't fancy working with yeah. the salon. I didn't want it Why? that much. I don't know. I, <laughs> I didn't feel the, the vibe. I didn't want it. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we lost someone. We lost a friend. Oh. So that's where now my career came to play. Mm -hmm. We lost a friend. And uh, I remember when we were told, we asked the family if we could go see the body. Okay. And they were like, actually, we are supposed to clear. Uh, you can go as you go pay the bills and take the clothes. Right. And we're like, fine, we're going to do it. So we get there and there was no one. At the mortuary? Yeah, there was nobody other than the gardener who was doing the, the field work. And we were like, where's the person who mm -hmm. is in charge here? Mm -hmm. And it was like, unless you call them. And we were like, okay, would you give us the number? And then we called. And the girl was like, um, unless you settle the bill of the place I'm at, that's the only way I'm coming to work. Wait, so the guy is somewhere hanging out. Yeah. You send the bill. Yes. So he comes. Yes. Yes. So he came and um, we were to pay for his transport as well. And I was held aback. I was like, what? What the hell? I was like, we're here, we are grieving, we're in pain. We've come to see our loved one. Why do we have to facilitate you being at work? So, but that was, that's what the industry had been known for, you get. And this time you're 18, right? From four, 18, No, I 19. was around 20. Or oh, 20. Yes, when you lost I was a grown-up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what grown-up at 20, please? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh -huh. so uh, we facilitated all that. But he was not even happy to see us, like, but we were like, okay. You know, the stories we have always been hearing about mortuary people, and morticians, mm. you don't joke with them. They are serious, they are raggedy and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So Kuna, there, there's that, you know, you, you're afraid of them, uh -huh. right? So that happened and uh, we had to tip for him to facilitate more. And to some extent I was hurt. And I was like, what if we didn't have that? How do the less fortunate get treated? Imagine someone who has lost, uh, an, an illiterate woman who has lost, you know, a metoka mm. from the interiors. Mm. They have lost a child. Mm. And they are coming probably to do what we were doing mm. then. 
how do they get treated? That held me aback and I was like, to what point does humanity not exist even in death? Because mm. I think when you lose somebody, you are at your most vulnerable. Yes, and your weakest. So why would you take advantage of that? And that kept me thinking and I was like, no, nah, but it's fine. What can you do? You know, it's a place where you cannot serve yourself. Mm, mm, you can't. Mm, so you are under someone's hands. Mm, so whatever they do is fine by you. What will you do? Mm -mm. So on the day of uh, picking you the guy, yeah. we found a lady. Uh -huh. I had never seen someone so dedicated and so passionate with what they do. She was like, hi. You know the way you even salute people. You're here for who you know. She was so calm. She had a, sp a very calm spirit. Mm. And I was like, are you a mortician? And she was like, yeah, I work here. And I compared the two scenarios and I was like, wow. So there is still dignity even mm. in death, you know. The way she handled that until the time we go outside, I took her number. And I was like, I'll give you a call mm -hmm. after all this is said and done. So one year later, I called her. One year? Yes. You remembered? Yes. How? One year later, I called her. So you were still doing cosmetology, beauty, salon yes. work? Yes, but in this sense, uh, my, I had told my uncle of my intentions. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a three months ultimatum of thinking I can. <laughs> I was told, take three months, think eh. about what you're telling us, yeah. and then come back to us again with the same news, yeah. you're going to facilitate. So by this time you had moved from your grandmother? Yes. You were living with your uncle? No, I was living by myself. Oh, by yourself? Yes, but your yes. uncle was like your guardian? Yes. Right, so yes. you had to, of course, brief them on what steps you wanted to yes. take in life. Yes, Yeah. So three months, I went back and I was like, I think this is what I want to do. So that lady's kindness and spirit yes. had such a profound impact. Exactly. My God. Mm -hmm. So you called after a year? After one year. And told her what? And I was like, I was just thinking about it. I was like, let me see if she'll pick up. And I, t I talked to her. I was like, you remember? I was like, I can't remember. You meet so many people. Yeah. I was like, scratch that. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I really want to do what you do. Yeah. And she was like, fine. You can do this. She, she walked me through the process. You went to see her? No, she, oh, we just talked on the phone okay. and she was like, you can do this, this and this. Uh, first of all, recommend you get an apprenticeship mm -hmm. uh, before you actually, you know, and that's what I did. So wait, so, um, gosh, this is going to sound so damn mm. for me, but yeah. so are there colleges that teach? So many. There are? Yeah, there are What colleges. is the name of the course? Motor Science. Motor science. Yes. But she wanted you first to practically intern yes. at a mortuary. Yes. And For me to make a decision. Uh -huh. Yes. A, a, a sound decision. Yes. 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 Sound yes. informed decision. Yeah, yeah. So did you? I did. You did? Yes. Okay. So what was that day like? So you went, knocked on the door, and. I went and uh, I did knock at the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I want every step. Uh -huh. uh, I met, I met, I met the in charge of the facility that I was. Okay. Was this in Nairobi? In Nakuru. Oh, Nakuru. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And I just, I walked in and I had my papers and I was like, I want to be among you. I want to work for the dead. And they were like, okay, come. I was oriented on the first day. And I could see people covered in brown sheets and I'm like, yo. That was not even the problem. I usually have a very sensitive nose. I'm very oh. sensitive to smell. Okay. I could smell everything. Yeah. I could smell the blood. I could smell, you know? And I was like, oh my, what have I gotten myself into? What was that day one? That was day one. Before even I was accepted, I was oriented first. Of which, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. so far, so good. <laughs> You have really summarized that. <laughs> but so by the time day one is ending and you're yeah. going home, yes. what, what's running through your mind? A lot. I was mm -hmm. like, am I even serious with my life? <laughs> <laughs> is this really what I wanted right. to do? For the rest of my life, I'm a, it's just for a short time and then yeah. we, we start over. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's see how it goes. 
-hmm. So for me, um, the, the dead mm -hmm. were not an issue. But through working for them, I could see the help you accord to the living. And that's when I understood it's not about the dead. It's about the living. The service we do is not about for the one who is dead. It's about the one who has been left behind. My God. Everything we do is not for this. These ones don't care what we do. The dead have no business. The only thing you can give a dead person is dignity. Every other thing you're doing is for the family, for the ones left behind. And for me, that was a starting point. I was like, it's not about them. Yeah. It's about the ones who have been left behind. The ones on our corridors, the ones giving up, questioning God, questioning the process. Those are the people we work for. Mm. Yes. Mm. And you came to, all this wisdom was downloaded to you during that period of time? The seven months I was there. Seven months? Yes. Wow. And I was so good with makeup for the dead. I don't know. I may not be so good with my own makeup, but no, for your some makeup reasons. is exquisite. I mean, please, it's exquisite. So, for some reasons, so I, when you say makeup, I am so good with with reconstruction and makeup. We'll come to those things. Okay. Uh, because now I'm here, like you do makeup on the yes, desk. yes, we do grooming. Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll come there. Lord help me. So. Um, <laughs> When you came to, it's not about them. For them, it's just about treating them with dignity. Yes. What does that mean? The dead person does not care about the service you provide. They're not there. They do not know what you're up to. In any case, the system is against them. They just want to rot away. Hmm. But everything you do is for these ones. Those ones coming to seek for your help. And it's not a matter of consoling them with words is how you treat their loved one that they get you know, consoled. Yes. It's how you will view your mom on the last day, how you will view your child on the last day, that will give you at least some ease to know that there's someone doing that on your behalf and taking care when you can't. Yes. How did you eliminate the fear, if at all you had it? Uh, I wouldn't say I was afraid. No. No, I don't know why, but I wasn't afraid. Mine was just the smell. I think I really didn't like it at all. <laughs> so most of the time you'll find me washing. All the time. I'm always cleaning up. I'm always disinfecting. I think I have low-key OCD. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> and I think my boss is lucky for that. Because <laughs> I'm always the kind of, I don't want to see a stain. Mm -hmm. I don't see blood. So I'm going to clean it. So most of the time you'll find me in the cold room more than in the office. Cleaning. Because I don't want the way things smell to smell for the next person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was my trigger. And I lost weight on the first three months. Why? I couldn't eat. I was going home and I was just like having the vu of the day. And I'm like, oh God, what have I smelled the whole day? I can't yeah. eat. Yeah. Yes. And you dripped weight completely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so, so... When you went to intern, did you then decide you wanted to go do the academics part of it or you just continued now in the, in the job? Yes, I interned and uh, by God's grace, yeah. I, I, I got my papers right and I got a job, a real job now. Okay. And I was made the in charge of a whole entire department at a mission hospital. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm still in school right now. Okay. I'm a student at Masinde Muriro uh -huh. University, Kakameka. Uh -huh. And yeah, everything aligned itself eventually. Yeah. Yes. So when you say department, what's the name of that department? Uh, the mortuary department. Hmm. Yes. The it's, a, it's a department on its own. A very independent department. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest in the facility. Yeah. Yes. So you're in school studying what? The same, mortuary science. Mortuary science. Yes. We'll go as high as it gets. They introduce degree, we go for it. So what you have studied is up to what level? Uh, the right certificates, now, diplomas? We do certificate. This diploma just came the other day. Uh -huh. Came to see, introduced diploma. Uh -huh. There's a lot of buzz going on about uh -huh. why we need to study to wash the disease. People don't playing it. Yeah. But at the same time, it has gotten a lot of acceptance from young ladies. Uh-huh. Inspiration? Yeah. And Monganki's videos. <laughs> <laughs> Your videos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 
Okay, so what we'll do is uh, take a short commercial break. is What's Your Story? I'm Catherine Mwangi. We're on part two of this program with our mortician. I don't know why that just makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Wanji Konjoki. Yeah. Um, so inspired, so in case you're just tuning in, she was inspired to get into this industry when she went to um, uh, commiserate with, with her friends or family, someone had passed on and they didn't, she didn't like how they were treated. And then when they went again, there was a lady who just like, that's when her life shifted completely. And it took her one year before she, you made the decision yes. that this is what you want to do with your life for real, yeah. for real. Yeah. And you're studying yes. right now at yeah. Masinde. You're yeah. studying for your degree course. A degree is not yet introduced in Kenya. Oh, it's not in Kenya? Yeah. Oh. Unless you go to the US. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's baby steps because the industry is just growing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll go, we'll move as it moves. Yes. Yes, we'll be the pioneers. <laughs> yes, yeah. I like yeah. that, pioneers. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to us about what you said earlier on about, uh, what do you call it, makeup and reconstruction. Yes. What, what is that? Um, makeup, there is the basic makeup. Like makeup? Yes, makeup, like the one you and I have. We you, do makeup. On, on the dead on the bodies? Deceased, yes. Why? Uh, because we want to give them a perception of rest. How did this person look like when they were alive? Uh -huh. Then we relate to that. If you're a makeup person, we will do makeup on you. If you're a natural person, you just stay as you are. Yeah. Sometimes the skin fades when you die. Oh. Uh, because of the chemicals used, they might be a bit harsh uh -huh. for your skin. So, yes, we were going to put some bit of makeup on you just to make sure your skin looks a bit better. Yes. Again, it's not for the dead. It's for the families and loved ones who exactly. come to see them. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, some of these people die on their sick beds. You can imagine a man who's been in hospital for the last six months, not received any facial groomings. They have hairs all over. And that's not how people know them when they're alive. So, and reconstruction means what? Reconstruction is putting back together. Uh, we don't always receive the rested. Uh, death comes in, in many forms yeah. and yeah. Know, accidents, yeah. murder, hmm. those kind of things. Huh? So it's just putting back together. Someone might have really got a really big aceration on the head. Oh my God. So you need to, 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 to do that for the sake of the family. Yeah, yeah sometimes you find this uh, in the accident, somebody's hand is chopped off or probably separated into two because probably the belt was too tight or something. So it's the putting back together of a person. That's what we call reconstruction. Yes, and it takes a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so, uh, I'm really sorry if I'm gonna sound so graphic. It's so on, on one body, like how long would it take you? It depends with the extent of damage. Of the damage. Yes. Uh, sometimes you spend up to a close six hours trying to put someone back together. And then but, you dress them? Yes, we do dressing, yeah. We do dressing after that. So the first time you had to, because um, I'm imagining, I mean, it's not every day we wake up and, and, and yeah. we are handling the dead. Mm -hmm. Forget even just the ones who slept peacefully. Mm -hmm. Accidents, murder, yeah. cats, yeah. you know. Yeah. The first time you encountered mm -hmm. um, a body like that. Mm -hmm. What did you, what, what happened? I think you, you, you get, you orient yourself. Mentally? Yes, you orient yourself. Uh, when you ask about fear, there are things that are not taught in books. Mm. There's nobody who will sit you down and tell you, no, stop being afraid. 
it's just the way your mindset will go adapting to things. Mm. Yeah, with time you 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 get you get used to. Mm. Yes, with time you you just get used to. And furthermore, if everyone is looking, you know, upon you to do to deliver, you not run away with them. You have to stand <laughs> there and you know and facilitate. That's the best thing you can do. Where do you get this strength and wisdom? I cannot take credit when there is God in heaven. Mm. Everything is on God. I also sometimes don't know how I pull this off. <laughs> you know, it amazes me. Sometimes I go home and I'm like, wait, what, what a day. Yeah. How did I manage that? Yeah. And I'm like, I owe it to God, 100%. 100%. Oh my God. Yes. So, so break this myth for me. Yes. So if you're in the mortuary, yeah. do you hear sounds? I know it's quiet, and then you hear something has fallen. Mm. Is this, are those things true? No. First <laughs> of all, you need to understand there is no relationship between the dead and the living. When you understand that, a lot of that will make sense. There is no relationship between those two realms. Uh -huh. Unless you're really paranoid or you have other things going on. Um, no, there is no relationship. Yeah. And actually, um, they're the most peaceful, at their most peaceful. Yeah? I would actually be afraid of a person who's talking to me right now than <laughs> the person who's sleeping. <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah. These people are so harmless. They're so harmless. There you position them today, tomorrow you're going to find them the same, same place. So, okay, what's a typical day like when you get into a mortuary then? When you get to, when you get to your office, mm -hmm. to the cold room, I heard you say cold mm -hmm. room. Yes. Let me start using words that are correct. <laughs> yes. So when you get to, to the cold room, mm -hmm. uh, people bring in their loved ones. So what are those steps? Um, there's something called the SOPs in every department. The standard operating procedures. Yeah? So people come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. People come from abroad. That is repatriation of bodies. Okay. Uh, people come from other mortuaries, transfers. People come from home. Others are on transit. Somebody died on their way to hospital. Mm. Somebody died on ambulance. People come from different locations. It's not a specific place. Some are wheeled from the hospital, from our hospital, from other hospital, right? So the first thing that you do is... Uh, Obviously, there's a salutation bit of it. Regardless of how bad it is, you need to welcome your guest at the premises, right? And how do you do that? When just you say salutation, what do you salutation mean? Salutation just by acknowledging their presence. Sorry for your loss. You're most welcome. Just welcome them. Either way, there's no way that you, know, you don't welcome people, right? After that, you ask for the necessary documentation as per from where they're from. So if it is home, you know what to get what legal documents you need, if it is repatriation, the same. And then from there now, you don't. That is uh, gearing up, dressing for you. You remember you need to protect yourself because you don't know the ailments. They can be cross infections, contamination. So you don't. And then you pick the body from the vehicles that bring them in. So when you pick the body from the car, yes. then? Uh, you ask one relative to get inside with you. Uh, that is for search. You want to search if they have any valuables in their pockets. You know, when these people are getting old, sometimes they tend to hide their IDs, their title deeds yeah. uh, in their headscarves. So it's always oh. good to yeah, it's all good to get because people will be like, he had money on him, and you don't want that on your end, all right? Yeah, people will be like he was just from doing a transaction, he had money, and you look bad. Mm. So the best thing you do is just get a family member to do the search. And then from there, just ask them now to leave there. Is there anything you can give them back? Mm -hmm. Yes. So from there, now it's a matter of undressing. You undress the person uh, and place them on the table for now washing. Sanitization, sterilization and washing, yes. Would, would you, you wash them with kawaida water? Yes, with soap and water. In a normal bath, the final bath. It's called the final ritual bath. Final ritual yes, bath. Yes, yes. So soap, kitamba. Soap, kitamba. You 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 make them squeaky clean. Yes. Squeaky. Yeah, you need so to be really clean. Wow. Yeah. And then, and then from there, it's a matter of reducing trauma. Uh, some of these people come with their mouth and eyes open, so you close the mouth and 
the eyes. Like physically. Yes, and then you put them in positions where they are aligned. The person needs to be facing up. Uh, so you provide a headrest or a pillow so that their neck do not tilt. Yeah. So from there you oil them up and then you refrigerate. Oil with like mafta? No. Uh. <laughs> we use, uh, you, you use uh, solubles like uh, glycerin, the kind, because the normal lotion will not work on them. Why? They do not have this, the body temperature to absorb that. So what does glycerin do? It, it's it not stays, absorbable? It's, yes, it, it stays. stays ah, yes, okay. yes. So there's the shiny bit of it. Oh. Yes, or the, uh, you see the, the one that you put on the bike? Have you ever seen that oil that you put on the bike or in the machine, the swing machine? You mm -hmm. know it? Yeah, there's that one. Yeah. Yeah, there is that one. Yeah. 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 Because the skin is, oh, the skin is yeah. dead, the body is dead, so the skin There's is not no breathing. There's no yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have to reconstruct? Uh, no, that falls under forensics. Probably somebody's from the accident. So that one is done together as when after the postmortem is done, the, poor, the autopsy procedure. So I was going to yes. ask that, yes, yeah. because, yeah. Th thanks for taking me there. Mm. Um, when it's like a police case, mm -hmm. um, and, and or even like we hear, not, not just personalities, mm -hmm. but you know, our family doesn't know how our loved one died mm -hmm. and they want a post mortem mm -hmm. to determine that. Mm -hmm. So the stages you've given us, mm -hmm. uh, at what point does that happen? And in post mortem, what are you looking at? Uh, when you're dealing with a forensic body, you do not follow the procedure as that of a normal or a natural death. Uh, when a police car pulls up, direct to the fridge. The Without body does not get tampered. That's a crime scene on its own. You do not get to touch that body or remove anything from it. You just lodge it as it has come until the family is now ready to do an autopsy. Because the doctors are not always on standby. At you mm -hmm. just arrived and then mm -hmm. you start. Mm -hmm. It's not an emergency. It's, it's, it's a big procedure. So it's something that needs to be prepped and planned for. Right. Yes. So straight to the fridge? Straight to the fridge with your clothes, everything. Uh, how, the way you came? The way you came. So that it can be recorded. Details are needed. What type of shoe are you wearing? What type of clothes were you wearing? What color? Those things really matter when you're doing a forensic uh, post So they go in the fridge even with the shoes? Everything. As you came. If it's one shoe, you remain with it and if that's it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then after... <laughs> what? After yeah. the, uh, what do you call it, autopsy, yes. post-mortem, yeah. now you, the procedure you laid out happens. The yes, cleaning. after all that, now we start the cleaning now. Yeah. So you cannot start with the cleaning when mm -mm. it comes to forensic mm -mm. bodies, yes. So by the time you're doing the oil, so going back to the procedure, mm -hmm. by the time you're oiling mm -hmm. uh, the body, mm -hmm. now that you freeze it. Yes. So you can either choose to embalm a body, that is the treating of the body through chemical means, uh -huh. or you can choose to refrigerate it. So they are both serving the same purpose, mm -hmm. and it's to forestall decomposition. Mm -hmm. So however your department works, yeah. So do I get the choice as the loved one mm -hmm. to decide whether I want an embalming? Not or really. No. It will be, uh, not really in Kenya, no. You don't get a say, because oh. what if it's the only option? Because most uh. of these facilities are not equipped with the refrigeration. Uh. So what, is, what if it's the only option or what? Okay, mm. so most is embalming? Yes, mostly is embalming. For those who have refrigeration, they do refrigeration. Unless we do embalming, unless the body has issues, like it had some sort of decay, degree decomposition, that's when now, or you, it's being transferred to a very really long distance and the fridge will not hold, that is when we embalm them. Yes. What does a hard day look like to you? For me? Yeah. A hard day is when I find a child in the morgue. That makes my day really hard. Any other thing bring my way. But a child, I'll have to, I'll have to rain check for that. Yeah? Yeah. I don't, I don't thrive when it comes to children. No. I don't, unless when it's really necessary for me to do it. But you'll always know I, I don't like being around when we're handling kids, yes. So your colleagues do that? Yeah, I will be somewhere in between, avoiding it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
So in a male dominated industry such as <laughs> yours, yes. um, what, what have you gone through as a very young female in this very old male dominated <laughs> industry? What are some of the challenges you've had to overcome? I have to work twice as hard to prove a point. Because people will look down on you. They'll be like, I don't think you're up for it. So you have to work twice as hard. And working in a male dominated is never easy. It's not. It's not. You have to, you, when, especially when you have a bit of, a lot of femininity, mm. it looks as if, you know, and then the easy intimidation of them thinking you want to downplay them or you, you're bossy. You know, when you really go get her, they start branding. They're like, you're too bossy. And it's not about being bossy. It's being leveling up. Mm. You know, you need the, the respect to be served across. Mm. I don't want the client to come and think I'm not up to the task. Mm -hmm. So if, if that means that I'm going to do what you're doing, then we have to. And so be it. Yes, so be it. Yeah. Yes. We're going to rub shoulders, but with time, yeah. you're going to get used to. Uh, yeah, it will be okay eventually. <laughs> yeah, we will be fine. Because you do know what you're doing yes, anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. so mm. that thing of feeling threatened shouldn't yes. even arise. Yes, eh? you work twice hard to prove that those men from, they're like, they don't want a lady to touch their own. Oh, the traditionalists, the, the conservative, yeah, traditional. Like, there's no man around. And to some extent, you respect that. Because you can't force, you can't force, you can't impose something on a culture that has been there. Oh, so it also comes yes. from the clients, yes. so to speak. So the, the problem is, is when now they are told, she's the only one we got. Now decide. And what do we do? They they're just... like, fine. And then after you've done it, they're like, wow, now the questions. Yeah, people ask so many questions. Oh, they are, yeah. They're like, wow, you did it. I'm oh. like, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So the prejudice also comes. It's not just the men you work with. Even from across the table. Yes. Oh my God. Mm. But you're very strong, eh? Internally, like you just, very. you butt your head in. Ah, and very, very. You need to. Yeah? You need to. You know, you have people who look up to you. We are trying to clear a perception that has been, that we are not uh, equal to the task. So for everyone who, is, who, who takes me as a mentor or for anyone who looks up to me, I have to try for them so mm. that it will not be hard for them. Mm. For us, we didn't have people to look up to like when we were getting this industry 100%. So we didn't have role models. No. Actually, I remember someone telling me, don't say what you do for a living. Gosh, why? I don't know. Maybe it seemed off okay. or it will bring some sort of you know, institution like work work and or something. Ah, yeah. ostracizing. So, so you, you'll be stereotyped, yeah. So I was like, why wouldn't I tell the world what I do? Yeah. What about the younger me? Who does she have to look up to? It cannot be me and her. It has to be me for her. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And now your family is also very supportive. I don't even think they remember what I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they remember. They don't? I don't think <laughs> they remember. This is my grandmother sometimes calls me and it's like, uh. I pray for you a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it's like, I pray for you a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and obviously, so now you've gotten to that point where it's about, like you said before, it's about service to people. Yes. Uh, it's about... Um, it's about serving the living, the yeah. ones that are living, the yeah. ones that are grieving. So how do, you, how do you help them come to terms with this loss? To be honest, there is no words that can be said to someone who's grieving to make it better. And sometimes we often not say the wrong things trying to fill in the silence. Mm -hmm. You find you're saying the wrong things thinking you're helping. I always advocate for silence. Just be intentional, be there. In whatever capacity be there, know your role, right? So for me, mostly is to make sure that you know 100% you have someone to help you through this. Even if it's not 100% because we'll not go home with you, the 10%, at least I know we have walked a mile with you and that's enough. So in speaking about mentoring, I know you, you are completely huge 
on TikTok, yes. uh, <laughs> and and you have through through the videos you do there, uh, what kind of um, inquiries or questions do you get, especially from young females who want to get into this this industry? Because there could be some watching as well, yes. who may not be on TikTok, yes. but they've heard what you're saying, and they're yeah. like, huh. Mm -hmm. I, I can do that. Yeah. What, what is, how do you guide them? Uh, the question that I get, how did you get there? Mm. You know, mm. what are the steps to getting there? Because mm. people don't think this is a profession. Mm. All right. Mm. People think you just get in it and you're good. Uh, some will ask, how do I sit my parents down? How do I talk to my husband about this? Yeah. And that is where we start. All right. It's by telling people what you are not told. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 There are things I, I found out for myself. So other than that, let's make a shortcut for them. It's easier. Mm. When I tell you there's a school uh, that's offering this course, this is the duration, uh, this is the much fees they might be expecting from you, uh, it's part-time, is it full-time, uh, what to expect to get in the industry, how to close your ears, you know, because I keep telling them, if Anne listened to what the society had to say, we will not be having her here. Yes. Sometimes you need to, like, close your ears and do what your heart desires. And then eventually life aligns itself. Mm. Your people, you'll find your people everywhere. You don't have to fit in every crowd. Mm -mm. You don't have to be, it's not about acceptance. Mm -mm. It's about... Let me do what I can where I can. God will bring the right ones that we surround. Mm. And I've seen grace. I've seen God's grace. I have seen people being drawn to me. I feel people asking me, what's the con? Do people want to talk to you? Yeah. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Uh, people are drawn to me. I think I have a welcoming spirit. Magnetic. Yeah. Yes. So for me, I've not had it rough when it comes to people saying a lot. Uh, but it's a matter of, I think now people are literate enough to understand these are our jobs mm. and they can be done by anybody. Yes. But for those now, it has not gotten to them, we keep on, all right? Mm. Because you never know who's watching. You never mm. know who your words are, you're addressing. So for that young person, yeah, I will wake up in the morning, put my camera there and tell you exactly how it is so that you have something to relate to. Yes. Yeah. What, what have the highlights of your career been so far? When somebody you served three years down the line comes back and tells you, thank you. My day is made. Mm. I know I'm doing the right thing. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. when somebody, you've seen these show shows, they don't have money. Somebody comes all the way from home and brings you chicken. A live one at that. <laughs> For gratitude, yeah. you know, that's the memory of the heart. Yeah. So you really impacted this person to go home, grief, get done, and then come to you and say thank you. That's a lot. Mm. Mm. That's, I don't think there is any salary that can beat that. I don't think gratitude is everything. Mm. Yes. Gratitude. Speaking of salary, so is it a well-paying <laughs> career? <laughs> this question is courtesy of OT, <laughs> my cameraman. Uh, he wants to know how much morticians are paid in this country. Unfortunately, mm. I think it's one of the most underpaid. Unfortunately. Sorry to say. It's one of the most underpaid. I think it's one of the most forgotten industries in the country. Yeah. I don't think they know. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't think they know mm. the level of input. And you give me a country that has forgotten about its kings. It's mm. doomed to fail. Mm. Mm. All right. So I wouldn't say we earn a lot, but I also think that the money we receive is blessed. Mm. There are blessings in it. So you've worked with the dead. Yeah. Monday to Friday, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. And you have two days off in a week. Yeah. How do you recharge, re-inspire yeah. yourself, re-energize? Um, sometimes it gets overwhelming. Sometimes. Yeah. It gets really overwhelming. You know, the, you never know, like, your body is shutting down on you. Sometimes it gets overwhelming. But um, we are provided for counseling if you feel like it. 
all right if you feel like you're really downed by turn out of events we we have a very big facility where you can always debrief mm. from a counselor talk to someone uh for me i think it stopped getting into my head a lot i have to separate the work bit of it mm -hmm. and my personal life mm -hmm. while at it mm -hmm. there is Anne mwangangi left mm -hmm in the department and then there's Anjo Ki at home <laughs> two different people yeah yes so we do the normal things that people do yeah yeah you can catch you know you can catch a right you know yeah I go have friends so. yeah yeah okay yeah okay that's pretty cool so yeah. as we say goodbye yeah uh, what is your inspiration to people wanting to become morticians especially young females, and you can tell them, see, the camera is your best friend. <laughs> um, there's a song that says, there's something you want to do, just do it. Don't let your head stop your heart from moving. The stars will align if your heart is purposed. Just walk with a graced spirit, serve with intentions, and God will do everything else for you. You don't have to worry. So go for it 100%. If it's something that comes from your heart, go for it. Yes. That is so powerful. Yeah. That is so powerful. Well, Anne Mwangangi, office, Anne Joki, home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming to uh, share your story with us here. Thank you. I just admire your courage. This Thank is you. a story of courage and grace. Thank you. It's a beautiful combination, and I'm glad you've shared it. Thank you. And thank you for watching our first ever mortician on what's your story. This has been very enlightening to me. And I'm sorry for all the expressions and the graphics. Someone had to ask the questions, right? Right. So uh, we just hope you've gleaned something from this inspiring uh, young girl. And if you have questions, she is huge on TikTok as Anne Mwangangi 2019. Anne Mwangangi, 2019. What happened in 2019? That was the starting point of my career. Oh, <laughs> so that's six years now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anne Mwangangi, 2019. TikTok hapo ndio ya na kuna mtu TikTok. Na ni stories are morticians. <laughs> stories are the dead. Okay? So find her there. If you have anything you need to ask, that's where you'll find her. I don't, are you on any other platforms? Yeah. For those not on TikTok? Facebook, Anne uh, Mwangangi Official. Uh-huh. Uh, Instagram the same yeah. and underscore YouTube the same and underscore. Ah, yes. mali. <laughs> so mumpate uko, ask your questions and also encourage her, you know, the work she does is it's obviously not easy, but I love that, you know, she's very focused with that and it's about serving the living. That is just so profound. So may we all have a heart for service um, for the rest of our days, I hope. Take care of yourselves and good night. Gem Suites Hotel and Luxury Service Departments currently boasts two properties within Kenya. Gem Suites State House Crescent, set in the exclusive State House neighborhood, comprises of 34 well appointed apartments and Gem Suites Riverside, set up in a secure, private, and tranquil setting. In the upscale Riverside neighborhood with 98 luxuriously appointed full service one and two bedroom apartments, superior hotel rooms, and presidential penthouses.